What's going on guys? It's your boy Brad and I'm back with another video. Before I get into this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. I'm putting out videos every week trying to help you guys obtain your dream of becoming a registered nurse. Enjoy the video. This video is primarily geared towards my nursing students. Um, if you've been in nursing school for at least one semester, you're aware of what SBAR stands for, right? Situation, Background, Assessment, and Report. This is primarily used by nurses, um, whenever they're calling physicians, they need to give their the, the doctor a quick rundown of the patient's situation, if they need uh, a new lab order, a new med order, whatever it might be. And it's also primarily used for shift report for the oncoming nurse. You want to give this oncoming nurse an idea of this patient situation, what's going on with them and how best to care for them, what the plan is for this, the next 12 hours. So in this video, what I want to do is I don't really want to focus on what would fall under situation and what would fall under background. That's kind of something that they, they try and teach you in nursing school, but um, that's not really what it is in the real world. In the real world, you're just given report, okay? And you kind of already have it in your mind of <laughs> what situation and background and the assessment and all of that stuff. So if you've been in nursing school for at least uh, a semester, you probably have undergone a clinical rotation. You have an idea of what report sounds like. This video is just to give you a better idea of how to give report and uh, what you can really expect to hear whenever you're receiving report so that you're better prepared to take notes and get going in your clinical day. So this is just gonna be a for example here and I'm just kind of rattling off the top of my head, so bear with me. Uh, <clears throat> got a 52 year old male came in uh, yesterday. He had sustained a gunshot wound to the chest and diagnostic testing revealed that he had suffered a pneumothorax as well. He went and had surgery at about 11 o'clock today and had a chest tube inserted to correct the pneumothorax. Um, he has come up onto the unit and whenever he came up, he had seemed to be tolerating, you know, coming off of anesthesia well. Um, whenever I listened to him, I could hear some wheezing and bilaterally in the upper lobes and the lungs sounded a little bit diminished in the lower lobes. Um, he was satting his O2 sats for about 95, 96% on two liters of oxygen via nasal cannula. Patient has an IV in the right AC running normal saline at 125 milliliters an hour. Patient lost about 350 cc's of blood during the surgery. He's been receiving fluid replacement to correct the issue. He hasn't been experiencing any hypovolemia or fluid volume deficits at this time. Patient's VTE or Lovenox and SCDs. Uh, patient's last bowel movement was two days ago. Of course, this pa the patient's biggest complaint is pain. So um, the patient has morphine and Dilaudid both on board, both PRN. The morphine is Q2 hours and the Dilaudid is Q6 hours. I last gave a dose of morphine, one, one milligram at... Um, 1700. He's been stating his pain has been running about an eight or a nine out of 10. Whenever I gave that last dose of morphine, he seemed to handle it pretty well. It knocked that pain down to about a three and he's been sleeping ever since. Um, he will be giving you some problems with uh, being agitated and uh, kind of aggressive because of the pain. He's just uh, not feeling well, obviously from the surgery. One of the big things that we want to focus on for the next 12 hours really is getting him up out of bed, getting him moving around. We want to, you know, I try to teach him that he needs to use, use the incentive spirometer. It's going to help his lungs help prevent the risk of pneumonia uh, that's something that you want to continue to, to work with him on maybe some deep breathing and coughing exercises really just to work those lungs of course if your patient had any abnormal lab values that'd be something that you would want to definitely report off to the nurse if it was something pertinent to the patient's situation like for instance with this patient maybe he would have um an altered abg right maybe have uh elevated CO2, maybe something pointing more towards respiratory acidosis. If that was the case, you definitely want to report off that information to your nurse mainly. So if, as you can see, I really just, you really give the nurse the nitty gritty information that they need to know what is pertinent to the patient's current situation. You gave them the situation, you gave them the background, why are they here? They sustained a pneumothorax, right? What happened? They went and had surgery, got it corrected, how they've been handling the surgery, how they've been doing post-operatively. You know, you gave them some vital signs, those, uh, I should have mentioned respiratory rate also, but you know, you gave them the O2 sets. Um, how are they doing? 
coming off of anesthesia. You know, gave them a little bit of information about the intake and the output. What kind of VTE do they have? Uh, what kind of medications do they have? How are they handling these medications, the pain medications, uh, especially the assessment with the lung sounds, the breath sounds. What have you been hearing? The lungs are kind of diminished. This is need to know information that your nurse definitely uh, is going to need in order to better care for the patient. So that's really the whole deal, guys. You just want to give the nitty gritty information. You don't really need to go into super depth about background and where they came from, unless it's just stuff that is definitely pertinent to the patient's situation at that time. So situation, background, assessment, recommendation, um, it all kind of just gets lumped up into this cluster of information that these nurses give to each other. And as you hear it more and more, and as you practice giving it to your classmates, you're going to get a lot better at it. And that whole idea of what goes underneath assessment what goes underneath recommendation, all of that kind of gets dumped by the wayside. I know that they really try to pound that in our heads in nursing school, at least in the first semester. Um, but that's something that does kind of fall by the wayside as you get more acclimated to hearing and giving report. Anyways, guys, I really hope this video helped you out. Be sure to subscribe. I'm putting out these videos every week for you guys, more than one video per week here lately. I'm just grinding, trying to help you guys, man, try to put out content that's going to be helpful and, uh, you know, fruitful for your journey in nursing school. Anyways, it's Nurse Bass, soon to be, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.